It was once believed that infants didn't feel pain. In fact, little was known about pain in children until the mid-1970s. Since then, research has shown that neuroexcitatory pain systems develop in early fetal life, and newborns may actually feel pain more intensely than adults. First, let's discuss the basic pathophysiology behind pain perception. Pain is a neurologic response to tissue injury. Free nerve endings at the site of tissue damage are called nociceptors. These nociceptors transmit information to the spinal cord via specialized nerve fibers. Once the sensory information reaches the spinal cord, the pain signal is transmitted to the thalamus of the brain where perception occurs. Interpretation of pain then takes place and the sensation of pain is actually felt. Now let's discuss the development of the nervous system. One of the reasons it was once believed that infants were incapable of feeling pain is because people thought the nervous system of children was immature. We now know that sensory neurons begin to develop by six weeks of gestation and peripheral nerves migrate to the skin of limbs by 11 weeks. By 30 weeks, myelination of pain pathways occurs and the density of nociceptive nerve endings is similar to that in adults by birth. Even though the neuroexcitatory pain system develops in early fetal life, the inhibitory system matures much more slowly and beyond birth. In adults, the mature inhibitory system causes inhibition of pain, whereas the immature inhibitory system of the newborn causes excitation. As a result, pain transmission is amplified in newborns, causing them to feel pain more intensely than adults. Historically, pain in newborns has been unrecognized and undertreated. As stated previously, one of the reasons for this was the belief that newborns have immature nervous systems. Another belief was that newborns were incapable of expressing pain, nor were they able to remember painful experiences. It was also argued that giving medicines to newborns with every procedure would increase the chances of drug accumulation, adverse side effects, and addiction. These beliefs were the reason newborns didn't receive anesthesia for surgical procedures, including open heart surgery, until the 1980s. Textbooks during that time period taught that open heart surgery on infants could be safely accomplished with the administration of only oxygen and a paralytic. It wasn't until the 1980s that the denial of infant pain began to be challenged with the rise of parent activism and pediatric pain research. Recent research has primarily focused on behavioral and physiological measures, which has led to the development of multiple infant pain assessment tools. The limitations from this research are the lack of sensitivity and specificity of these measures, which means the undertreatment of pain in clinical practice continues. More recent studies have used EEG and near-infrared spectroscopy to provide reliable evidence that no susceptive information is transmitted to the newborn infant brain. These studies have even confirmed that no susceptive information can be processed in the infant brain without a simultaneous behavioral response, further proving that the use of observational behavioral measures alone to quantify pain in infants isn't sufficient. In 2015, a study using functional magnetic resonance imaging, or fMRI, went even further to reveal the nature of the infant pain experience by comparing brain activity in different regions after painful stimulation to that of adults. It was shown that the increases in brain activity evoked by painful stimulation were extremely similar to the activity seen in adults. All but two of the 20 regions that were active in adults were active in infants. Although there has been great progress in research and understanding of infant pain in the last 30 years, gaps between knowledge and clinical practice remain. Even now, infants may receive less than ideal pain relief. Newborns in intensive care units undergo 11 painful procedures per day on average, and more than half of the babies receive no pain medications. Despite acknowledging that all neonates feel pain to a similar or higher intensity than adults, Less than 30% of doctors reported to always use either analgesia or comfort measures for heel prick, 
venipuncture, lumbar puncture, arterial stab, or long line insertion in neonates. Today, doctors and nurses are routinely observing behavior and physiological responses to assess whether infants are experiencing pain by monitoring vital signs and using the NIPS and FLAC pain scales. However, recent studies have suggested that this isn't the most efficient way to assess infant pain. The recognition of infant pain in clinical practice has long been an issue. Limited understanding and evidence of the occurrence of infant pain has led to centuries of poor medical practice. Recent groundbreaking research has proven the need for more effective pain management strategies and updated standards of practice for this vulnerable population. As nurses, we can do our part in moving toward these advances by giving a voice to those who cannot advocate for themselves.